Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about choosing a good crash symbol. We already did a video on choosing a good ride symbol, and today we're going to talk about this subject with crash symbols. So I just set up four of my favorite crash symbols, and they're all from different uh, errors and manufacturers, although two of them are Zildjian. So uh, this symbol right here is a Sabian Vault symbol. It's a 16. It's pretty much my most uh, popular, in other words, just the crash symbol that I use the most when I do gigs. It's a great symbol. We'll talk about this a little more later. Uh, on my far right, I have this 14-inch Peisty symbol. It's a traditional, which I love. Again, it's a symbol that I use all the time working. And as you can tell, I have no problem with mixing manufacturers or vintages of symbols at all. I do it all the time. Uh, here on my main stand is an old Zildjian K Brilliant Dark Crash, which I love. I got this symbol for free after it was damaged in a music store, and my buddy just gave it to me. So I just filed out the crack. It's a great symbol. And to my left, your right, I have this wonderful uh, old K 18 inch crash very light and I'll put the weights of these symbols on the screen because it'll take a long time to weigh them as we did in the other video but um, uh, what I like about a good crash symbol or what I require is number one that it be thin I, I don't like uh, thick crash symbols if you hit a symbol correctly you're much less likely to break it I've never ever ever broken a symbol uh, in my 50 plus years of playing. I was taught early on uh, by my teachers how to hit a symbol. So we'll go over that first. Basically you want to use a glancing blow like this. So what that glancing blow does, it deflects the force of the stick from putting the most pressure on one point of the symbol, which will crack it. And lots of people crack symbols, I know, because I hear about it all the time, asking me how they can fix them. Uh, it's not easy to fix a cracked symbol, so I would suggest not cracking it in the first place. Uh, so a glancing blow looks like that. So. If you just use a wrist flick like this, once again, you're deflecting the force and you're much less likely to break that symbol, if not ever. And again, all these symbols are very thin. I've been using them for years and years, never cracked any of them. And I can play pretty hard, but there's a difference between you know, beating the crap out of the drums and playing loud with a good technique. The drums will sound better too if you do that. All right, so uh, using thin cymbals like I said I do, that's one thing you always need to be aware of. If you use a thick cymbal, you can crack that as well. The problem with the thick cymbal, it takes a long time to react. By long time, I mean more, uh, several milliseconds. So you want a cymbal that's fast. So when you hear people say, oh, that cymbal's really fast, that's what they mean. Right when you hit it, you're getting a result. Really big uh, things like gongs, the really large ones, when you hit them, it's going to take a while for it to build up full volume. These thin cymbals have full volume right away. And again, that's another reason to use the, th the thinnest possible cymbal. I'll show you some really thin ones in a little while that are a little too thin. So we'll talk about that. All right, now uh, today we'll be showing you symbols as small as 14 inches. Uh, anything under that I consider a splash symbol. So 14 inches all the way up to 18, uh, 19, sorry. I have one 19 I'm going to show you. Uh, there are obviously very large crash symbols. I don't use them. I don't use anything above a 19 inch. And the most common ones I use are 18s and 16s. I do have some 17s. This is a 17 right here. This is an 18, a 16, and a 14. All right, so you know I wanted to show you my favorite ones that I use all the time before we went on. 
but don't worry about manufacturers. You can uh, mix and match symbols. As long as it sounds good to your ear, that's what you want. You don't need to stay with one manufacturer. In, in other words, I would suggest you don't do that. You try different symbols, and they all have different colors, especially the Paiste symbols. Uh, are very different, as you'll see in a second. And this is a Paiste symbol, like I said. The other thing about a symbol that you should check is uh, how you can choke it and how fast that works. So, so choking it, basically you're just grabbing it with the stick here, all right? I get the stick out of the way like that, so I can use my fingers like this, okay? And uh, I do a, quite a bit of choking symbols in what I do, the orchestra work, the Broadway work, the, the rock work, the jazz work, all that stuff. So uh, that's important to me. If I'm hitting it, it's taking a long time to die down, then I got a problem with it, all right? And finally, uh, the last thing uh, you want to hear, or the most important thing I'd say, is, is the fullness of the sound and the quality of the sound. So you want a basic attack, and then you want a smooth decay. But I like a fast decay, so. So it's not staying at full volume very long at all. And the bigger the symbol, the longer the volume's gonna last. So this 18, obviously, it's gonna last longer. And the old Ks, did have a very, very much of a long sustain to them. So that's one thing I look for in a cymbal, a fast decay and a pure sound tone. No pitches, no humming. Uh, I have a few cymbals here that'll have a little bit of a hum, and we'll talk about that. I picked them out, I don't use them that much. All right, so I'll put these away for now, but I just wanted to show you my favorites first, and now we'll dive into it. Okay, so we're going to start with some A Zildjian cymbals. And I have one crappy one here. We'll save that for a minute. Uh, so the A's are the most popular uh, crash cymbals ever made, obviously. And we'll start with a couple 16s and a couple 18s. Now, I showed you these 18s in my last ride cymbal video because I consider them crash rides. And they're great, these two 18s, all right? Okay, so we'll put the crappy one on in a minute. So uh, these are all A's from different eras. This is the most recent one. I believe it's from the uh, maybe 80s or 90s. It's a, a medium thin crash. Uh, they do have the A customs now that are great. Some of them have a little bit of a hum and they're a little heavy. But these A's here are from the... 70s, and this one is a really old one. This might be from the 60s, I think it is. All right, so we'll play these for you. So uh, the A's aren't my favorite symbols because they're a little bit metallic sounding and you don't get a pure sound, I feel like, out of them. The 18s are my favorites of the A's. Uh, this one, this 16s, has what I call a tone or a hum to it. You hear that, huh? I hear it here anyway. I don't know if it'll come across on the recording. This one's a little better. But they're kind of one-dimensional to me, so I'm not a huge fan. I do like the old 18s like these.
So those are my favorite of the A's. If you're going to get an, an old A, I would suggest sticking with the 18s. Um, to me, they sound better than the 16s. I've played some 16s I like, but never, never, ever one that I loved. But I have played these two 18s. I've had many, many over the years. Uh, these are the only two that I've really used anymore at all. Uh, and they're also good for bowing if you do any of that kind of, kind of stuff. They're, they're great. All right, so that's what I feel about these. Now, I do have a really old A. This one looks like it was buried underground. I got this when I bought an old drum set. And it's, it's not bad. At first, I thought it was a hi-hat symbol, but it's not. Um, those, a lot of those were marked. And this one's kind of in the middle weight range to be, to be a hi-hat. And I believe it's a 15. I do have some 15A hi-hats that I like. But, uh, but this, this was definitely a crash. It's got a very annoying low hum, and it's, it's a very one-dimensional. So I just had this. I don't normally use it too much at all. So we'll put these away. All right, let's go with some Pisces now. Uh, we'll put up some different kinds, but there's one kind that I love, and this will become obvious. I think the Piesty crashes are fantastic, especially the traditional. So some of the greatest crash symbols ever made, in my opinion. Never heard one I didn't like. Uh, the sound formula ones uh, are, are good. Uh, the 2002s are good. The uh, 602s, uh, not so much for me. I like their rides a lot better. Uh, they're very, very uh, kind of bland sounding to me. But the traditionals are great. So they're really fast, they're beautiful, they, they speak quickly. That's what I mean by fast, so. And they're thin, they're bendable, so they're, they're great. So we have here uh, two 16s, uh, a thin, and an extra thin, and then, and then a 17, which is Beautiful. The 17s are my favorites. I have two of them. Now here we have a mellow crash, uh, uh, Piesty. Okay, so, uh, and it's not a traditional, but it's it's a it's a really nice symbol. A little bit metallic. So if you're going to buy a Piesty crash, go for the traditionals. Uh, they're 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 the best. I think you know all around. Uh, you got to be careful though. They can crack. On you. I know they're guaranteed for life. I don't know if that happens anymore, but I know they used to be and they'd send you a new one. I've never looked into that because I've never broken one, but uh, try not to break them. But to me, a 17 inch Piesty traditional is just a beautiful, beautiful symbol. Now, we'll put this one away and I want to show you the 18s as well. I have a few of those. So here, this is the extra thin 18. Now the extra thin Pisces are a little, sometimes too thin for me, but they're beautiful with mallets. So if you do a lot of mallet on cymbal stuff, they're wonderful. Uh, I would stay maybe away on the drum set from the extra thins if you're looking for them. So just basically the thin line. So that's an extra thin 18. Now I'm gonna show you um, the thin 18, okay? It's a difference of about maybe a hundred grams or so, maybe less. So you see, that's much, much better than the extra thin. So that's the 18 and then the 17. Together, they're glorious. And 
I, I do bash them like that quite often. Never a problem with them. Again, glancing blows. Don't use your shoulders. Use your wrists, and you're fine. All right? They're great symbols if you want to ride on them, too. Cra I call it a crash ride. So you're crash riding on them. They're perfect for that. So my uh, pretty much my favorite uh, all-round crashes are these Pisces, all right? And that one 16-inch uh, Sabian I showed you in the first demo that I did, that's also a, a wonderful symbol. But you can't go wrong with these. So once again, the thin Pisces traditionals. I've never heard one that was bad. Uh, the extra thins... Be careful with those. They're a little too thin for me. Uh, and I have one more 17. Another thin. I like them so much I got another thin. Just gorgeous. Great. Okay, so let's show you a Peisty Symphonic. And this symbol is a rare one. I like it. Uh, they didn't, I don't think they make them anymore, but they're for a big crash, it's great. So if you really need a really loud crash symbol, this is a great symbol. Again, for you bashers out there, uh, rather than buy something really heavy, just hit it correctly. You'll never break it, and it, it sounds much better recorded, because I am a recording engineer, and I do some of this kind of very heavy music. And uh, I won't give the drummers my cymbals, but I recommend what they should use for the recording, because sometimes they ask me. And this is going to work a lot better than some really heavy cymbal. So uh, to end the video, I'm going to show you some kind of unique cymbals that I've also used over the years. And one of them is this really old 1950s K. Uh, I've had a lot of K, old K, crash symbols. A lot of them that I didn't like, several, uh, maybe 10 in my lifetime that I've owned and um, I still own and I don't use them a lot. This is one of the good ones, the 16s. It's not too heavy, it's not too thin. These tend to have a lot of bass to them. Again, uh, not my favorite all-round symbol. The 18 thin old Ks are the best. They compare well to those Pisces. In fact, they work really well. So uh, if you find a thin 16, and by thin, I mean like under, well under a thousand grams, maybe somewhere around 800, 700 grams, that might be a really nice symbol. But beware when you buy Muse because they could have a pretty bad hum to them uh, when you hit them. So now we get into some exotic things. So the Bosphorus Turk series, Basically, it's like a paper plate. <laughs> and these are very funky. So I love these symbols. Uh, they're paper thin, and they're just great for any kind of effect thing, and they're really, really fun to play. Uh, we'll put the weight up here. This thing seems like it's so light, it's ridiculous. I would take a guess, and I could be wrong, probably about 600 grams or so, or less. It's basically almost like a top hi-hat, but paper thin. So I really recommend these. They're a lot of fun, uh, but not an all-round crash cymbal at all. So, uh, also dream 
makes some fantastic symbols, the Dream Bliss line. Um, and here's one of them. This is an 18, so. Now, these are really good orchestra symbols, too. We use these in the orchestra. They're very dark, so they're almost kind of like Wuhan-like. And these ones here are made in China. Uh, this dream symbol definitely is, so. Got a lot of character, but not an all-round symbol, but something dark and especially good with mallets. So you might want to try some of these out, and they're inexpensive. That's the big thing. So you can get a set of these. And uh, I found that you really have to look through a lot of these. I remember this one's probably about 1,400 and change grams. It's heavy. So a lot of their symbols are heavy. There's not a lot of consistency to those symbols, okay? So make sure you go through a bunch of them. I would avoid buying them online unless you can hear a sound file. Uh, so another great sounding symbol is the Sabian El Sabor. And I think they still make these. I did a whole video on these because I have a whole set of them. I love these symbols. They're great. Uh, I have a set of hi-hats and ride, and these are the crashes. So we have an 18. And then we have a 15. Now, I use these a lot when I play timbales with a, with a Latin band, uh, especially this bell. This 18 is pretty much to die for. It's got a great crash, and it's got the most amazing bell you'll ever hear. It sounds really good with timbali sticks, by the way. So that's my favorite timbali symbol. And this one's pretty good, too, this crash. It's not bad. A little dark for me, so I wish it was a little bit thinner. Uh, it's a little too heavy. Okay. So those are the Sabian El Sabor symbols. And once again, I have a whole video if you look for it on these. Uh, finally, we have this 18-inch Bosphorus Crash. And we'll see if we can find this. I'm not sure what I did with it. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. So uh, once again, just like this 16, it's got this really funky uh, very thin sound. I showed you this in my ride symbol video because it does make a decent ride. Uh, actually, I didn't show you this in that video. I showed you the 20 inch one, which is also thin. These cymbals are amazing, and there's nothing that sounds like them that I've ever played. Uh, the masterwork symbols are similar, but these are some of the thinnest symbols you'll find. And if you want a different sound or a different effect, you go to these. They're great. A lot of times I just, I have a whole set of them, and I did a video on those too. But sometimes I just take them out and play for hours because they're so interesting sounding and they're so thin. They're so much fun to play, and, and they really choke well. Okay, so uh, I love them. First time I played them in a store, I, was, I didn't like them. I hated them. And then uh, I came back. This is a while ago because a friend of mine owned the store. And when no one was in there, and I said, hey, could I, could I set these up and play them for a while? Because I don't know. They stuck in my head. And once I set up a whole set of them, I just played... I think I drove them crazy, but I think I played for like a half hour just on these. Yeah, 
Yeah, they're nasty, you know? So uh, another kind of crash symbol that's not an everyday crash symbol, but I highly recommend just to have fun. And I have used them on gigs. Sometimes I get funny looks from the musicians, but, but who cares at my age? I don't care. So uh, those are the last ones I'll show you today, the Bosphorus. So really, once again, uh, what you want to look for is thinness. Okay, you want to look for a good amount of sustain. This is too short of a sustain to be an all-round crash. You want it to, you know, last about maybe three or four seconds and then completely be done after that, you know, die out. Uh, you, you don't want any kind of tone when you hit it. And also you want a wide timbre of sounds, not just a, you know, one-dimensional sound. Like I played you some of those uh, Vetus, those A Zildjans. They're a little bit one-dimensional. You want something that's got a lot of highs, a lot of lows, some mids, that just fills up the whole spectrum, okay? And if you have a good crash symbol that you like, a good idea is if you go to the store, bring it to the store and compare it all, because when you pick out a set of symbols, it's good to have all different pitches. Like I showed you in that first demo I did, we had all those different pitches of symbols. All right, so I'll play a little for you. I'll just put up whatever I got here. Uh, well, these are um, some Pisces, and we'll see you next time. I think I'm going to do a video on how to pick hi-hats, because I have lots of sets of hi-hats, and that'll be the next one.